With so many Pokemon, there's so many combinations for making the perfect team. And every Pokemon has a fan somewhere. And Disney's princesses also have plenty of fans, which led us to the obvious question. If Disney princesses wanted to put together their own Pokemon teams, which ones would they use? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Bench, and this is Which Pokemon Would Disney Princesses Use? Before we begin, unlike some of our other Disney Princess videos, today we're sticking to the official Disney Princesses, that's 13 to be exact. And quick, if you love Pokemon and our usual binge formats, consider subscribing to our Pokemon channel, PokeBench. Now, let's get started, folks! The first princess we need to talk about is Snow White, the princess from the movie of the same name. The first of her Pokemon is the lightest and shortest dragon Pokemon, Applin. This is the most obvious because it's based on an apple, and it easily represents the poison apple that she ingests. Her next Pokemon would be Deerling and Taillow because they both hit the same general idea, the woodland critters that Snow is friends with and seems to have a bond with. These Pokemon are also weak, which makes sense considering everything we see in the film. Her next Pokemon would be Dugtrio. The Moles Pokemon is mysterious and interesting to think about. She holds holds one on her team mostly because it represents the seven dwarves. This is because both are diggers and miners and small and mysterious. Her fifth Pokemon is Sableye. It may be weird, but let's think about it. This Pokemon is a hoarder because it's known for collecting and hiding gems, and it represents the dwarves and their propensity for collecting and mining multiple gems. Her final Pokemon would be Hatterene. This may be weird, but it's actually chosen to represent the evil queen and her witch form, due to Hatterene being basically most on witches on the wilds in England, which ironically is close to Germany, where the original story takes place. Next is the rags to riches princess Pokemon trainer, Cinderella. Cinderella is interesting because she had a very unique and interesting story. Cinderella's team would consist of the following. First, Pikachu and Dedenne. They would fit in perfectly because they're mice Pokemon, and they bear a striking resemblance to Jock and Gus, her two mice friends in the film. The next member of her team would be the Pokemon Gorgeist. Gorgeist fits into her team because it's similar to the mystical pumpkin character that the fairy godmother gives her. A wonderful dream come true. The next Pokemon on her team would actually be Clefable. This is for two reasons. The first reason is because of the obvious joke that the Pokemon's name has the term Fable, which relates to Cinderella being a fairy tale. The second reason is to represent the fairy godmother, who, much like Clefable, utilizes magic. The fifth Pokemon is Gardevoir. This beautiful woman-esque Pokemon is very representative of a princess, like Cinderella. Gardevoir also has a lot of magical powers like the fairy godmother. Finally, her sixth Pokemon is Perugly. This is a weaker connection, but it's chosen to represent Lady Tremaine's fat cat Lucifer, which shares a visual similarity with Perugly. Our next trainer is Aurora from Sleeping Beauty. Aurora, and we aren't the only ones who've said this, doesn't really have much of a personality to build a team around, so you'll be seeing a sort of common theme. Her first Pokemon is Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff is a cute pink Pokemon who is well known in the community, mostly due to Super Smash Bros. Jigglypuff hits all three major angles of Aurora's character, pink, singing, and sleeping. Aurora is well known for singing most of her lines, due to having very few, and Jigglypuff is the singing Pokemon, or at least the most popular Pokemon that utilizes the attack Sing, which puts those around her to sleep. Her next Pokemon would be Musharna. She'd carry this one simply because they represent her big thing, sleep. Musharna is known for consistently sleeping and its dreaming and psychic powers. The next Pokemon would be Cresselia. While most people wouldn't carry a legendary Pokemon, Cresselia would undoubtedly be attracted to Aurora due to her cursed sleeping nature. Cresselia is a legend known for dreams, and the fact that Aurora was cursed into this state means she likely doesn't have any dreams, which Cresselia wouldn't be fond of. Another sleep-based Pokemon on her team is Snorlax, which we don't need to explain too deeply. Snorlax Snorlax is like a big bear Pokemon that is known for sleeping, and while it's a powerful Pokemon, it wouldn't surprise us if she wanted to use it like a giant pillow or bed because of its sheer size. Up next is Galad. Much like Gardevoir is based on princesses from fairy tales, its counterpart, Galad, is instead based on knights and or protective princes. We feel like she'd carry one of these Pokemon because it reminds her and represents her prince, Prince Philip one of the few princes with an actual personality. 
Finally, we have Mega Charizard X, and the reason why is simple. From visual similarities to general references towards medieval dragons, Mega Charizard X is very similar to Maleficent's dragon form, including the fact that it shares a very similar color scheme, which means it's a perfect addition. The next Disney princess trainer is Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Ariel's team would be very simple, because her story is very simple. The first three Pokemon on her team would be Primarina, Gorbius, and Miletic. These three Pokemon are all based on mermaids. Miletic represents the beauty and rarity of mermaids. Gorbius is obviously based on the stories of mermaids where they wear seashell bras, and also represents the more simple stories. And finally, Primarina represents their beautiful stories and their singing and performing. She'd also have Kingler on her team. This is an obvious choice because it represents Sebastian, the crabby royal advisor. Similarly, Pelipper would land on her team to represent Scuttle, who's obviously a human world experiment. And lastly, Stunfisk. Stunfisk represents her good fishy friend Flounder, who, while not a specific fish, is named after the Flounder fish, which Stunfisk is based on, and is also known for hiding like Flounder. The next princess is Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Belle is very smart, and we figure her team would represent this pretty easily. First, Alakazam would grace her team, to represent Belle's intense intelligence and her quest for even more knowledge. The next member is Magearna. Magearna is a steampunk Pokemon that is very similar to Belle's father's inventions. This makes sense because Belle loves her father and would likely want a Pokemon that reminds her of him. Next is the candle Pokemon Litwick, who's on her team to represent Lumiere, the candelabra and singer of Be Our Guest, who helps Belle during her time in the castle. This is Lumiere. Enchanté, chérie. Next is Sinisty. Sinisty could easily be used to represent Miss Potts, the teapot that we meet in Prince Adam's castle. Rose Raid would also be on the team, mostly to represent the rose that is the focal point of the entire movie. And finally, Ursaring, to represent Prince Adam or the Beast, being a big, massive furry creature that could kill someone with a simple swipe, which the Beast likely could as well, not to mention the visual similarities between them. Now we have Jasmine from Aladdin. Her first Pokemon would be Theory Inform Landorus. We don't love handing out legendaries, but this makes sense in two ways. First, in Hysterian form, Landorus seems to be based on a tiger or another big cat of some sort similar to that of her pet tiger, Raja. Second, the trio that Landers is part of are based on genies, especially Jin, which of course, genies based on. The next member of her team would be Chimchar. While this is a bit of a weaker link, Chimchar is based on chimps, obviously, and would be the perfect stand-in for Abu, Aladdin's pet monkey. Her third Pokemon would be Mega Metacham. Another weaker link, but Metacham fighting style and general vibes match those of Arabic culture that Jasmine is from. The fourth fourth Pokemon on our team would be Raikou, to represent Raja, since Raikou is the closest we have to a Tiger Pokemon. Another stretch, but Mantine, because of its large size and the fact it flies around very similar to the flying carpet, a major part of Aladdin's team. The final member would be Chatot, because it's based on a parrot, like everyone's favorite parrot voiced by Gilbert Gottfried, rest in peace, Iago. You got a problem, Piggy? It's also kind of conniving and intelligent like Iago, so it's kind of a good fit. Jasmine's team is a little weird, but it hits a lot of boxes, so we think she'd do quite well. Next is Pocahontas. It was simple to put together her team because she has a lot of animal companions. First, we have Zigzagoon, who's chosen to represent Miko, Pocahontas's pet raccoon, a mischievous little critter who's more than happy to help Pocahontas. Her next Pokemon would be Pikapek. This small Alolan bird is the closest the Pokemon games have to a hummingbird. The reason behind this choice is because of Flit. Flit is a small and feisty hummingbird who has a bit of a rivalry with Miko as one of Pocahontas' pets. Her third Pokemon would be Snubble to represent Percy, who's not Pocahontas' pet, but actually Ratcliffe's dog, who Pocahontas ends up adopting during the second film. Fourth is Trevenant. Unlike the previous, which are based on Pocahontas' pets, this choice is picked to represent another character entirely. Trevenant is a large tree-like Pokemon that is inhabited by a spirit of some kind, which is exactly like Grandmother Willow, the wise tree that Pocahontas gets her advice from. There's still some snap in these old vines. Her fifth Pokemon would be Torterra, 
The continent Pokemon is chosen to represent not only the idea that Pocahontas takes place on a new continent for the Europeans, but it also represents Pocahontas and her connection to nature, being a walking piece of the earth. Her sixth Pokemon would be kinda weird. It would be Smeargle. Smeargle was chosen for only one reason, to reference the most famous song from the film, Colors of the Wind. Smeargle paints the colors of nature much like the song's title, and chorus implies that Pocahontas does as well. Her team is skewed towards small animals in nature, which is a perfect example of her personality. Now we have Mulan. Mulan lives in ancient China, and we imagine some of her choices would reflect this, such as her first Pokemon, Shiny Gyarados. This giant dragon Pokemon is chosen to represent the famous Chinese dragon voiced by Eddie Murphy, Mushu. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Now get out there and make me proud. Shiny Gyarados is a giant red dragon Pokemon based on typical Chinese dragons, and while it's much bigger than Mushu, it's obvious that it's a pretty one to represent. Her next Pokemon would be Krikatoon, which represents the lucky cricket that Mulan's grandmother gives her early in the film. Third on her team would be Pangoro. This choice is twofold. First, it represents the panda that Mushu rides on when pretending to be a royal advisor and delivering a letter. Second, its fighting form is a good representation of China's panda population and Mulan's fighting style. Speaking of fighting, Honej would also land on her team because it's a good representation of the sword that she takes from her father. Fifth would be Min Shao because it's a good example of martial arts that we could see Mulan using and also fits the mold of a pretty lady who's actually dangerous, like the final battle with Shan Yu. Finally, she'd have Mudsdale to represent the horse that she grows quite attached to, which makes it an easy choice. Mulan is very intelligent, and we think she'd make a great Pokemon trainer, and she has a team to prove it. Next is Tiana from The Princess and the Frog. Tiana's first two Pokemon are Froki and Politoed because they're obvious representations of herself and Naveen when they're turned into frogs. Plus, they're some of the most recognizable frog Pokemon that still visually look like the frogs from the film. Next would be for Alligator, who's chosen to represent Louis, the jazzy alligator who joins Tiana and Naveen to go meet Mama Odie. Louis is a big, strong gator who, much like for Alligator, can command a room simply by walking in it, such as when he made the whole boat scared by popping up. Her fourth and fifth team members are Volbeat and Illumise, who were chosen to represent Ray and Evangeline. The two fireflies are important to the team. Yes, Evangeline is a star and not a firefly, but the implication at the end of the film is that when a firefly dies, it becomes a star. Because when the saddest death in the film happens, a second star pops up next to Evangeline, which we assume to be Ray. Finally, she'd have Slurpuff. This small, almost dog-like Pokemon may not be popular, but it represents an important part of Tiana's story. Slurpuff represents the food that is at the center of her story and would be a great addition to her restaurant. The next princess is Rapunzel from Tangled. Rapunzel is an interesting character. Being trapped in a tower for so long, it means she's garnered a very specific personality, and her team would represent that. The first team member is Kecleon. This chameleon Pokemon represents Pascal easily. Not only do both utilize their camouflage to their advantage, but they're both kind of similar visually and personality-wise. Her second team member would be the legendary Glastrier, specifically to represent the white horse Maximus that hates Flynn, but apparently likes Rapunzel to some degree. The next member would be Sunflora, which was chosen to represent the sun imagery of her home kingdom, and would be a nice reminder to have, and could also represent the growth she experiences in said kingdom. Soul Rock is chosen for similar reasons. Not only does it represent the sun imagery, but also could represent the floating lanterns the kingdom is known for, since it's known for floating around. The fifth member would be Tangrowth, chosen because its long, massive tentacles and size is a good representative of Rapunzel's hair, and the fact it can be used to do things such as climb, swing, or tie people up. Finally, and this may be a bit of a joke, but her final member would be Drifloon. Now, while this could also represent the floating lanterns, Drifloon is known for kidnapping kids randomly by pretending to be a balloon, much like Mother Gothel kidnapped Rapunzel and pretended to be her mother. Whether she knows this story or not would be irrelevant, though we know, and that's enough. Next is Merida from Brave. Merida is probably the most overlooked princess, but we believe her team is far from easy to overlook. First, she'd have Ursaring, 
This choice is obvious because it not only represents her mother, who gets turned into a bear, but also represents the general bear theme. Similarly, Teddy Ursa would also be on her team because it makes a good representation of her three little brothers who are also turned into bears. The third member would be Rapidash. This large horse Pokemon makes a good representation of Merida's horse, and its flame theme also fits with Merida's hot-headedness and subsequently her red hair. The fourth member is kind of obvious, being Decidueye, for one very obvious reason. While other Pokemon represent guns or swords, Decidueye is known for being the archer Pokemon, and with Merida's amazing archery skills, it's obvious this would be her partner. Up next is Litwick. This small candle Pokemon is a very obvious and fun nod to the Will O Wisp that we see in the film that are a major part of the story. Her final Pokemon would be Miss Magius. While it may not be obvious, this ghostly Pokemon Pokemon is a good replacement for the witch that Merida meets, especially since it's implied that she's sort of a ghostly figure. Merida's got an interesting team. It's strong in just the right ways. Now we have Moana. Moana, much like Ariel, is a water-based princess and her team would likely represent that. Her first Pokemon would be Mantine. Moana's grandmother is an important part of her story, and after her death, she came back as a large manta ray, which is why we chose Mantine to honor her grandmother. Her second Pokemon would be everyone's favorite newbie, Lechonk. This is chosen to represent Pua, her pet pig, that she refers to as brother. Despite being the typical animal sidekick, he does get left behind, but it still feels right to add him to the team. Similarly, Torchic would be on her team to represent Hei Hei, the chicken who sneaks aboard the ship and is part of the team during the film. Next is Alolan Executor, and its purpose is twofold. First, it can represent the Kakamura, the little coconut creatures that Moana and company fight, but it's also representative of the coconut trees that are native to the island and the crux of many of the issues in the film. The fifth Pokemon would be Makargo. While the movie does not feature any major snails, it does feature Teka, the large lava monster that Makargo would represent with his lava body and general aesthetic. The final member would be Crab Brawler, and this one is chosen specifically specifically to represent Tamatoa, the giant shiny crab that is a secondary antagonist. That's my grandma! That's my grandma! I ate my grandma! Not only are they visually similar, but they're both big crabs. Moana's team represents where her team would stand at the end of her journey, which is why it's so varied. Our final princess is also the newest, Raya from Raya and the Last Dragon. The first member of her team is one of the newly revealed Scarlet and Violet Pokemon, Severledge. This knight-esque Pokemon with Plasma Blades is a good representation of not only Raya's status, but her fighting prowess and how strong her morals and powers are, especially compared to other princesses. Second, she would hold a Sand Shrew. While this Pokemon is named after and based on a shrew, it shares many similarities with Armadillos, which makes it a good stand-in for Tuk Tuk. Tuk Tuk is Raya's steed and companion, which is based on a mix of an armadillo and a pill bug, so this combination shrew and armadillo makes a good stand-in. Next is the legendary Pokemon Rayquaza. It's an easy and obvious pick for the last dragon Sisu. Not only Sisu legendary because she's the last dragon, but she also bears a striking resemblance to Rayquaza. Since they're both based on Asian dragons, the fourth member would be Spiritomb. This spooky ghost Pokemon bears a striking resemblance to the main antagonist, the Droon. Being sort of liquidy purple creatures that turn things to stone, it makes sense for Spiritomb, which is connected to a guide stone, would be a pretty obvious stand-in. Speaking of turning things to stone, Onyx graces the team simply because it's a pretty obvious stand-in for being turned into stone thanks to its stony body and large size. And the final member would be Mega Sableye. This was chosen because Sableye, in its mega evolution, is known for its giant gem. This makes it an obvious representation of not only the dragon gem, but Raya's family, who essentially hoarded the gem in the guise of protecting it. Raya has some strong Pokemon, and her team is quite formidable. Alright guys, that's it. Let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos, but most importantly, stay wicked.